Okay, let's continue with this unboxing. Nothing like first opening a watch. Yeah. Very exciting. Ta -da! Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about this pair of scissors. No, we're not. We have on my left, Victor. We have on my right, for all of you viewers should know, Daniel. We we're going to actually just sit around talking about um, our watch journey, who we are and how we are and how we got into the game and so forth. But it just happens that I recently made a purchase and it's right in front of me. So we thought, you know, we're going to throw in a bonus uh, unboxing for you all. Starting off, guys, what should we do? Should we do the unboxing first? I'm really excited to see what's okay. in this bag. One of my friends that just works up the road, you know, I normally have a chat. He's a jeweler. He loves watches. We'll, every time we walk past his shop, I stop by, we'll have a good chat. And then we're talking about daily beaters and stuff like that. For, for those of you who don't know what daily beaters are, basically it's something that is cheap and cheery. You wear it every day. If you lose it, if you break it, you're not going to lose sleep over it. He then showed me these couple of watches he had in his drawer. When I looked at it, I was like, oh, wow, those actually look really good. The one I really liked is the one that he actually didn't like very much. And so I thought, you know what? God, let me go online and have a look. And there was a good sale on it as well. So it was like 30% off. Wow. So I was like, yeah, all right, okay. It's cheap and cheery. So yeah, I thought, yeah. why not? Just get it. It's fun. And I thought it'd be good for the content. So this is the box. And I got it from... Graham's Jewelers in Australia here and they gave us a voucher for $35 if you spend $200 over so you guys can have that if, if you like to buy anything from them <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into this all right so, so this is where we're probably going to do some camera magic we're going to <laughs> why am I speeding up when you guys can speed up with a camera we're actually going to put a slow motion <laughs> <laughs> right so Ooh, Seiko. Seiko. You can't go wrong with a no, Seiko, right? You can't go Seiko. Not. I didn't think I was ever going to buy another Seiko, to be honest. My viewpoint on beat is that you should only have one or two. Because after then, it becomes too many. And then you're going to get into this waterfall of constantly buying beaters. And before you know it, you've got thousands upon thousands of dollars of these <laughs> beaters. And you're no step closer to your right. dream watch or the That's next right. big boys it's watch. It's a black you know? hole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I want like, all those new collectors, please don't fall into the trap like I have. Okay, let's continue with this unboxing. Nothing like first opening a watch. Yeah. Very exciting. Ta da! Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a little. <laughs> so, talk about that for any climax. Ta da! And you know you've got a beater when the watch is wrapped in bubble wrap. <laughs> Can you imagine Rolex being wrapped in bubble wrap? <laughs> Come on, guys. Jesus. Really? All right, get rid of that crap. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh. Yeah? Very pretty. Yeah? Here I was sitting, you know, I've got one Seiko, which is my Seiko. Patty. Oh, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. All right. Love, love, love. This is the watch I wear to every holiday. I swim with it, I do everything with it, I bash it. Sometimes I throw it at someone's head. It still doesn't break. <laughs> right? Well, you should try throwing it at my head. <laughs> I think I think shatter. <laughs> this has been my go-to steak where I take every with me. The amount of times I've taken this to the ocean, never washed it, it just keeps on going. It's just cheap and cheery, right? And I thought this will be it. That's all I want. And then my friend Dickren, maybe we'll have him on one day. He's a jeweler and he loves talking about watches. And uh, he showed me this, so he said it doesn't wear it much. And I looked at it and I went, wow, I love this olive military green. The band Bam. is super supple, feel that. Wow. Yeah, like, like just soup, you can just like the band. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. it's just really soft and supple. And I love the, the, the contrast, it's got a black dial and it's got that cream, creamy, sandy, yeah. you know, sandy um, color tone. Yeah on the oh, bezel, okay. in the dial. It's very military. It's got this beautiful, robust, uh, protective casing on it. 200 meters water resistance, and everything just felt so great, robust, and I went, wow, what a beautiful looking watch. Very pretty. Stunning. Like, you know, so, and I looked at one website, it was like um, seven something, 700 something dollars. And I thought, okay, that's a bit of money for it, you know. Then I went on another side Graham's, and there was an, another online jeweler as well, had this uh, sale. So it ended up being like $350. Wow. 
Wow. It was almost 50% off, I think. Mean. It's a good steal. It's, cr it's crazy, right? Yeah. yeah. So I was like, oh. <laughs> I wasn't going to buy another Sega, but surely the looks and the price, it can't go wrong. Like, to be honest, like if you were a young guy, like you just want to watch to wear around who's, this is, this is hot. I love That's it. Right. You know? I Try it on, just, just like, it's, it's really, really pretty. And it's a good size. Yeah, it's a great sad. size. It's not massive. Like, you know, the patty is quite a big just wearable, but that's not a nice size as well. Ever since you showed me Seiko, I've been looking at them. I've never seen a Seiko. Like Seiko's it. got a lot in the catalog, a lot. And that, and that, and you see, and that's solar. Oh. It's a solar quartz. So it lasts even longer. It's just in their solar quartz range. You should be able to find it on a website pretty easily. I know Citizen does a similar ver version mm -hmm. to this, but they had a lot more green dial. So if you like that really green and tinny feel, Citizen's probably your bet. But I prefer this, it's just nice and slick. The, the darker tones and the, you know, that sort of beige markers. And, and I'm gonna bought a new toy. Oh, cool. UV, see? see? Oh. So we can look at the, uh, no so, so now we can look at the, um, Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Well, it's it's sort of a bluish. It's blue. It's bluish green. Like an it? aqua. Sort yeah, of. it's it's like a bluish green. Oh, that's stunning. Well, so I saw, I go, I really like it. And for three hundred and fifty dollars, you can't go wrong. You can't, yeah, you can't get anything that looks like that as well. You can't go wrong. Yeah. You have quite a collection. I haven't seen one quite like that. Yeah. Before, yeah, that's very. Different. Well, like the other one, I would say I have in my beta box. That's sort of similar, but not really. Is my Uni Medic. Oh yeah. I have a bit of a story to tell about the Unimatics and this was one of the pitfalls I fell into when I got bored and couldn't afford any big watches so I thought, you know, get some micro brands. And this is probably the third Unimatic I bought. I got stupid a bit. Right? When, because once you start chasing, you start chasing and yeah, don't right. do that guys, do not do that. And this this was still like over a thousand dollars. Whoa, okay. Right. The claim to fame is this is an Italian brand. Mm. They had a few write-ups by some famous, well, a few YouTubers. The case is meant to be made in Italy. Mm. The movement is a Seiko NH35. Oh. It's, it's a cheap movement. Right, right. Um, but the case is robust. You know, the finish, it's not the best sounding name to be honest. It sounds like, you know, when you, know, when you have a spring that's almost got a pop out. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, it, it sounds quite cheap. But the case itself, it's, it's quite utilitarian. It's quite well robust. I love the markings. You know, yeah, the, well, the markings, the Arabic. So that's Arabic numerals, yeah, it's right? Really cool. So, so it's, it's got the Arabic numerals. I always do the crown wiggle test. Oh. Okay, so you, so you can see there's a little bit of play there. Yeah. Right, right. Some watches are even more expensive. You go, they, they go even so. So the tolerance is not that great. So the story with this particular Unimatic was that when I first bought the first one I got, I wore it. I really enjoyed it because it's green. It had the Arabic numerals. You know, I can't afford the Rolex Arabic numerals because you know. Um, so I thought, wear it, play with it. It's great. And then it just stopped moving. Stopped working. I will shake it. It will work a bit. <laughs> I thought maybe it's the battery. No, it wasn't the yeah. battery. And then it would just run slow and stuff. So then I thought, you know, guys, it's not working, blah, blah, I sent it back. Three months later, I got it back because they said the movement was faulty. A Seiko NH35 movement, faulty. Wow. You know, who would have known? So they swapped it and they got it back again. So this is a second version of this particular watch that I got. But there's a cautionary tale in this one, you know? Yeah. It's, a, it's a thousand bucks or thereabouts. Do I recommend this to anyone? No. <laughs> <laughs> I generally don't because once you have it for a while, you you have it and there's really nothing about it that ties you. I will only keep on to this one because of the novelty fact, because there's some Arabic numerals there. Mm. There is this green there. Again, you know, thousand bucks, 350. Wow. Which one would you rather have? That's right, the choices. I Which one that. would you rather have? That one's gorgeous. Very clear. Like, you know, like, so again, guys, micro bands, and this is a thing with micro bands is that you guys got to be really careful, okay? It's like a junkie on one another hit. <laughs> <laughs> You're constantly searching for another hit, you know? Yeah. Like because it doesn't, you haven't bought it because of any deeper connection to that thing. Yeah. So eventually that your heat would drop and then you go, oh, what, what the hell did I spend? 400 there, 500 there, 700 there, 1500 there. 
before you know it, you probably spend four or five thousand mm. dollars. And I think it's probably a good segue into how we all get into watches, I suppose. Is yeah. that, um, you know, one thing's for sure from hanging out with a lot of watch geeks is that the watch collecting community is a very fickle one, right? Everyone's got a lot of ego and everybody in it has a lot of opinion, mm. right? And it's never a good combination, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> it's never a good combination. <laughs> <laughs> but it is fun. It's yeah. generally in good humor, right? They can still laugh at themselves. Uh, some can anyway. Uh, Victor, would you like yeah, to start? Yeah, stuff. So watches to me as I grew up was always just a toy that tells the time and it's just for the convenience. Because back then, at least when I grew up, the phones wasn't that readily available to everyone. So it was still clocks and watches. And then for watches, it was the Casio. Right. If you had a digital watch, you could tell the time easily during exams or stuff like that. Yeah. You're 22. Yes, 22. Okay, you're 22 year old young man <laughs> just starting out in his you know life and yes. you know already getting into watches, which is a very privileged age getting into watches. To be very frank, 100. percent Yeah. So I think back then, a lot of the time, growing up, everyone asked or, or had to look at the clocks on the walls to know the time, or just ask the kid that had a digital watch, because analog watches. You know, it wasn't very cool as a kid. It I was very confusing. I couldn't bit I could barely read it. I couldn't read them, yeah, either. <laughs> I could read them till I was an adult. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> that was horrible. <laughs> but what you have, you can't even read now. You can't even see the watch. <laughs> True, very true. Right, put, a, put a macro shot of the watch we're talking about that I'm talking about. Yeah, you can't even read the time. Yeah. You're like, just get lost in it. You get tripped. <laughs> yeah, tripped out, yeah. yeah, so, and then I think it wasn't really until I joined TGL, where everyone was, well, especially La, La loved talking about watches. He was, you know, so there was always a topic about watches, you know, when someone came in with a new watch, we'd talk about it. It was just an interesting, fun topic. And then that also piqued my curiosity. You know, it really developed, like, why is watches so interesting at times? But then I kind of attached it to a meaning of my own. Mm. So I myself am a very sentimental person. Mm -hmm. So, with the first very first paycheck that I got, you know, this was kind of like my first full time proper job. So then I decided, you know what, I want to buy something that is quite substantial, not a small purchase, right? That has a lot of meaning so that I can keep and hold mm. for the rest of my life, mm. maybe. Mm. Right. Are you wearing that watch then? I am. I'm yeah, there we go. Right okay, now. yeah. Can you tell the audience what it is? So it's a Seiko five yeah. automatic watch. That's a very considered purchase. That's right. I'm pretty sure I consulted you many times <laughs> about it. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, took, I took a very long time thinking about what yeah. to buy, ask yeah, oh, for a lot of opinions. Beautiful matte blue, sort of deep pale matte blue, sort of a dial with a applied markers in day date. You know, you can't go wrong with that, can you? I mean, it's a solid one. Hey, what was the price you paid for? I paid for this one, it was on special. I got it for 200 There you go. You got $200 for that watch. Yeah. You know what I mean? $200 for a Seiko 5. That's going to last you till the test of time. Yeah. It's got day day. It's, it's like, you know, it's got a bit of weight. Look, the bracelet is a little, feel, feel, feels a little bit of tinny, but sometimes we like that tinny feel. You know, we don't always want to have that Rolex sturdy feel, right? Like, we just want to have a bit of, you know, uh, I've actually got a Citizen on me, a Citizen Quartz. It's actually pretty nice. Of and who bought you that watch? Uh, I actually have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea? <laughs> no idea. I thought it was my girlfriend, but I asked her. She's like, no, I, I don't know who got it for me. You're a lucky guy. <laughs> yeah. you, watches, you don't have no idea who's buying you watches. birthday gift, I guess. Um, God, I, I wish to live a life like that. I got this watch. Wow. Card, <laughs> it's a mystery I'll get back it's to. Just, it just found itself on my wrist. Yeah. So this one's Quartz. The first um, automatic that I got, uh, was this trippy one. So I was sort of talking about what does a watch mean for me? That's nah, stunning. Functionality, I don't care about. Readability, I don't care about. This watch that I got, it's called Humism. It's like a trippy illusion one. I couldn't read that one for the first month I wore it. <laughs> it's got some like black dots, it's got a circle, looks great. I, we'll, we'll get some macro shots yeah. on that for the viewers. Oh, by, what you by the time I read it, it's an hour later. <laughs> um, so it's like, um, it's for a Singaporean brand, Seiko Movement NH35. Um, yeah. But it's nice, it works, but I love art. 
I think with a, with a watch for me, it's it's artistic. I, I don't care. True, true. Time. You are creative, and therefore you buy the watch you yeah. suits you. Yeah, and so, um, but you chose today to wear this dress watch. Yes. With a um, <laughs> a, a very casual. Look at that. Hey, who am I picking? Up? <laughs> God, sometimes I'm such a you know. <laughs> Snob. Well, I was just matching colors. I'm like, such a snob. But you know, it's a great watch. Citizen, this is more of a dress watch, of course. You have no idea how you got this watch, so you wouldn't know what this cost. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this probably is maybe, again, a couple hundred dollars. We know it's a quartz, by the way, the thing is ticking. Yeah. Why do you need to print quartz on the dial? Yeah. You know I was what I mean? like, the same thing. If like, this, this watch didn't, didn't have shit. quartz <laughs> WR50 printed on it, it would have been so much more. Why put that there? It's like cheap. <laughs> That's really I mean, you can look at Daniel Willington and so forth, right? They just nothing on it. You, know, you don't even know what it is. And they, and they sell it to you for it's like a hundred dollar watch or a two hundred dollar right. watch, but it's only like a ten dollar Amazon watch. You know, you know, you know what we're telling. Because you can't tell. Whereas you know, citizens like you, yeah, yeah, it's a cheap watch. Let's put quartz on it. If yeah, yeah. You know? it's, it's interesting. interesting. No, it's a great watch. It's yeah, uh, it's, reliable. it's quartz it's reliable. That's it. And um, and. When was your first watch? So about, probably about a year ago you got me into it, uh, similar to everyone's story here. Um, and I didn't know what an automatic was, um, so I was looking, I got my first uh, first quartz and you're telling me, you know, get, look, look at automatics and ever since then I've been looking at automatics. I actually did get a new watch. So I recently hit my two years at TGL. Oh, gee, um, did I say congratulations? <laughs> it was just last week. So I'm thinking, why do you still have a job here? <laughs> 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 uh, well, I thought, you know, I've been staring at this watch for a long time. And What'd you get? Got, Why did you bring it to show the crowd? It hasn't, hasn't come yet. Oh, okay, well, let's it's don't, don't tell yet. us. Let okay, this be a surprise. And let okay. this be another episode we see what Daniel bought. <laughs> this one that I've been looking at for a while. Um, I've been taking my time with it and I thought I'll, you know, I'll go for it. You know? I'm the, I'm very intrigued. I have no idea what it is. I'm very, very intrigued. Do not tell me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do not tell me. Not as trippy, not as trippy. Okay, well, yeah, yeah well, I am intrigued. Yeah. I'm very, very intrigued. This is probably um, halfway through the video where we can talk a little bit about logistics so we can say, watch logistics. You know, eventually this logistics stuff is going to just really go out the window. So there is no more logistics to be said. We already said everything we can. Let's just talk to them about the damn watches. But you know, but there is something relevant to say. So I got obviously this Seiko from Graham's Jewelers, which is Australia based. Uh, I believe they might even be Sydney store. I think they were a Sydney store, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it took a bit over two weeks for me to receive it. Two weeks? More than two weeks for me wow. to receive it. Wow. Going back to the Christopher Watch one for all those viewers have seen that episode if you haven't go watch it right this thing took me four days to receive it all the way from uk wow that's fast two and a half weeks from sydney four <laughs> days from uk so a lot of you folks are going how come why yeah. why why well the explanation is quite simple they're two completely different supply chains right um, it's often faster when you use an express premium courier like the DHLs, the FedEx, the UPSs of the world if you pay a premium service that it comes through the international chain or you know like logistic supply chain it comes here there's only a certain amount goes into their local courier network and then bang right they, they don't have to worry about all the other uh, Australian domestic post and this logistics structure they got to go through the rigmaroles of whereas because this came through the local post service this would have mean you know because the post office will have their own way of rolling and delivering things right yep. going depot depot different depots you know this mail goes there a lot more sorting a lot more um, um zoning and so forth that slows the whole process there. that's perfectly normal guys so so don't ever think oh you know if i can get this you know from the uk four days why does it take two and a half weeks from australia um it's just the way it is how the distribution network is set up full stop it's not efficient australian uh, local domestic services are not efficient by any stretch of imagination but we do live in a very big country mm -hmm. okay right. so but again you say well UK you know it's different okay because these guys probably would have paid maybe 10 15 dollars yeah. whereas our friends at Christopher Ward maybe have paid maybe I don't know, maybe 40, 50, 60, 70, maybe even a hundred dollars for that shipping to get to me. Mm, that sense. just tells you the amount of margin that they have That's over right. their care as well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So there is different, you can't, it's it's apples and oranges. Okay. So that's a bit of logistics talk. And I think that was a pretty relevant point. Absolutely. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. From a very young age, we all we all had our watches, right? Yeah. I remember watches from 
Happy Meals. I remember watches from Easter Show bags. I remember watches, you know, we've all gotten the, well, maybe not you guys. I definitely got many of those cheap, you know, animal face watches where you flip up and it's just a tiny little LCD screen, you know, it's like, you're like, ooh. <laughs> you don't look at the watch because that's the most boring part. Yeah. So you flip the lion face, ooh, lion, right? <laughs> This is what most kids get into watches, right? <laughs> because when you're young at that age, right, time means you, you got to get back home somewhere, you know, like yeah. playtime is That's over, right. so you don't care about that. And then, of course, growing up in your sort of teenage years, you get given watches like Casio's of the world, Swatch. Mm. Uh, I had a lot of Swatches in, in my time. Uh, if I, only if I kept a few of them, they would be bloody worth a meme now. So my, my very first serious watch which i don't have much connection to because my auntie got it for me is this bon and mercia which i got when i was 16. and you can see it's very elegant for a 16. <laughs> so you can see why i don't have any attachment to it. <laughs> right the bracelet literally look like a piece of jewelry right it's, right. it's like got that real sort of rice beads type of feel um, but it's a very trendy gray dial which is very in right now it's a small petite watch i think this is probably maybe 30 three or even 34 very, mil, very, very petite. Very but back then it was quite normal. Yeah. This was, you know, one of the 16, some years ago now. I won't tell the viewers <laughs> yeah. how, how long that was. Um, but as I'm getting older, slightly, I'm getting reacquainted with it. It's still got that dive watch feel, but even though it's called the Formula S or one, I can't even read it because that's small. It has a lot of details, which I never appreciated when you were young. Right. And, um, but as I'm getting older, now I know a lot more about watches. It's like, you know what? That's a pretty attractive watch. Definitely. But what surprises me, this is a not very old, old watch. Mm -hmm. Look how bright wow. the loom is still. You know what wow. I mean? Look how bright the loom is. You know, it's, I have a Yema here, which is a reissue. A Yema Superman reissue of a classic vintage watch. It's a different loom, but the hands are like green. But you can see like, it's very faint, it's faint yeah. right? It's faint. And you have a watch here that's over 30 years old. So wow. shiny. That's, that's so great quality. That's you know, great quality. I'm pretty sure back in those days, a lot of these materials and parts would have been still made in Europe. Mm. Whereas a lot of those new micro brands, guys, probably all made in China, right? Parts made in China, Asia made in China. And that's the thing is that what is made in Switzerland? Made in Switzerland is if you can prove 60% of the watch value is incurred in Switzerland for it to have that made in Switzerland. That's interesting. We never <laughs> knew that. Yeah. It, it's a bit shady like that in the yeah. watch world. It, it's a bit shady like that. My first watch I have a lot more attachment to is my Tag Heuer Professional 200. Right. Yeah. So this is, again, similar to your Seiko 5, has that matte blue yeah. dial. And this was back in the day, I got into this in year 2000 when I was on my European trip. And back then, Tag Heuer was really, really hot, right? That blue with the logo of the green and the red, it was a prestigious sign. Well, to a young punk like yeah. I, I was back then, right? <laughs> and it was the only watch I can afford in Lucerne in Switzerland on a Kentucky trip. <laughs> Every country I went, I want to accomplish three things. Oh, and, in, cool. and in Switzerland was to um, buy Swiss chocolate, eat Swiss fondue and buy a Swiss watch. And I went to, would have been Bukra actually, I think would have been to Bukra in Lucerne. And, and I go, I want to buy a Swiss watch. Ah, yes, this one? No, no, no. Yes, this one? No, no, no. This one? No, no, no. And I can just see the sales lady, you know, going from the counters, going lower, lower, lower. Oh, no, no. <laughs> like, hear me. I don't remember her face, she was like, okay. She had to bend over to the cupboards. It wasn't on the side, because, was it a whole tray of the, what are these? I go, whoa, Tag Heuer, I know that brand, <laughs> right? It's like, I bought this one. How much? It was all the money I had in my bank. All the money I had. And I was like, I will have no money for the next two months when I get home, but yes, I will have that one. This was the cheapest watch on the display. And I just remembered that it was like showing me this trade. No, 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 no. <laughs> She's been so good. Put on this one. Okay, yeah, I'll take that one. <laughs> it's old, it's worn, but you can just see it's still like, it just, like, it still has that sparkle. It still has that sparkle. Yeah. But it still feels solid, you know what I mean? Like That's right. And it comes from a great heritage of a tag Hoya. And it's a great story, you know, and that's what I associate watch watches mm -hmm. with. You know, like, like similar to yourself, you've yeah. got to celebrate a special event. That's when that watch it will mean something to you. That's right. And it's no longer about 
making money on it. It's it, that's your thing. You you never sell that thing, mm -hmm. you know, because you associate it with something meaningful. Absolutely. Such a beautiful blue. Yeah. I love yeah. that blue. It's very nice. And I recommend to all my friends, for example, when they have a child or something, I go go buy a watch, right? Because you, the poetic thing about that is that then that beautiful moment you buy that watch at that moment for that event. And because it celebrates that moment, and if you and it's a mechanical watch, it lets that moment run in perpetuity mm. if you look after it, right? So that watch is keeping that memory running. Look, it's it's my way why I love watches. It's, 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 deep. it's, it's, cool, you know, it's why you want to keep that watch well looked after it because that's keeping your memory running forever. So that's my watch experience. Um, what's your next purchase? <laughs>watches out there I don't know why I'm so drawn to a lot of moon phase watches okay so I've been looking at the the long jeans moon phase watches okay yeah long jeans it's great heritage great watches by all accounts yeah. but expensive now they're no longer cheap that's right they're no longer cheap but then that comes down to the purpose of it yes because yes it looks like the JJ Le Coup. so you stick to your original what you like. Yeah. Don't shortchange yourself because it looks like Jenny Lecoup, but I, look, but I can't afford Jenny Lecoup. <laughs> I'll go for that, right? Which JLC did you want to buy? Oh, one of the moon phases moon phase. as well, yeah. A JLC moon phase. Okay, well, there's nothing wrong with that. Moon phase, it, it, we all should have a moon phase in our collection. I don't, but yeah, but I, I, but I agree. You, we, you need to have one. I love those little quirks. Like a moon yeah. phase. You already got your next watch. So, yeah. So uh, we want to share your story. I can bring it in for an unboxing. I'll yeah, we will do it. Yeah, um, do that. It was one that I was sitting on and I was kept sitting on it. It had a sale. I kept sitting on it, kept sitting on it. It went off sale. I should have got it. And so I messaged them, I'm like, when, when we'll just go back on sale, they're like, look, if you want to buy it right now, we'll go half price. Mm. So that's, it's a good lesson. Maybe reach out just in case, because I almost bought it full price. And I was like, I'll just stop. Yeah. I'll just check with them. And yeah. they're like, look, if you want to buy it right now, yeah. I was like, I'm, I'm in. So yeah. I'll be bringing that in. I look forward to it because I'm very, very intrigued and curious. People, there's a huge thing, you know, yeah, it's an investment, yeah, it's not an investment. Most, you know, watch aficionados and say, don't buy watches, it's not an investment. Of course it's a damn investment, yeah. you know what I mean? But don't go out of way thinking that just because you put your money towards something that you're gonna make something from it. Investment cuts both ways. Investment doesn't mean you make money. Investment could mean that you go bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. But it's still investing. Don't get into it for pure sake of investing. Yes, that I agree. But are watches investment? Absolutely they are. But you also got to be damn good at it if you want it to be a great investment or even to make money. Don't just think because I'm going to get a watch and therefore I'm going to I mean, automatically make money. Well, then don't because with that thinking, you're already going to lose money and to you, nothing is ever an investment. You go in there with the right motivation and intention. The investing, the making money part, it should be a bonus because when that bonus is gone, you still got the core reason why you got into in the first place. Yeah. A lot of things we can talk about watching. This is why I love That's watches. Right. It just brings people talking and different things, conversation flows. I love this conversation. I can't wait to talk more about it. Uh, I feel like watches and the evolution of it is something that's always ongoing, our experiences with them, and it'll be interesting to see our perspectives yeah. in the future. I'm just excited to see what watch Daniel Mix. picks up along the way. Me too, yeah. Yeah. me too. <laughs> me too. Uh, it should me be coming soon. Yeah. Yeah. Daniel was very excited that he bought a watch. I I've had a bit of time with it. He signed an agreement that he won't jump out of the, <laughs> the window or the building if he hears something he doesn't like. Well, my last words is right now, if you're gonna buy any serious watch, do not spend any money now. The market is sliding down. Don't catch the falling knife. Do not buy any serious watch now. And when, before you think you wanna pull the trigger on that micro brand, just remember why you want to do, you want to buy that watch. Because if it's to stop, it's to keep, tick that itch that you want for something bigger, it's not gonna happen. So chill, wait, don't buy any watches now. Micro brands, think twice on why. Because these days you can't walk past anything without stepping on a YouTuber who's launching a new, well, I mean watches. Okay, that's, that's it. it. Are we done? Yep. All right.